In Raccoon City, the founder of the Umbrella Corporation Dr. Marcus is looking for a cure for his daughter Alicia, who suffers from a disease that causes premature aging. Marcus is so desperate to save her that just in case he records his daughter's voice and likeness for backup. Eventually, Marcus discovers something called the T-Virus, which can cure over 1,000 diseases. The treatment saves Alicia's life, and Umbrella begins marketing this new product as medicine. Later in a cable car in South Africa, a child who took the Umbrella medicine chokes on a peanut and collapses, so the adults rush to do CPR. At that moment the student transforms into an undead and attacks the teacher to feed. By the time the car makes it to its destination, all the members of the group are dead or have mutated. The incident gets covered up by Marcus' business partner Essex, but soon both men argue over what to do with the T-Virus. Marcus thinks it's too dangerous and wants to destroy it, but Isaacs wants to use it for military purposes, so he makes Agent Wesker kill Marcus. Afterward Isaacs becomes a guardian for Alicia and her half of the company, so he's the only person in control. In the following years, Umbrella becomes one of the most powerful companies in the world and Isaacs needs help handling it, so he creates an AI called Red Queen that looks just like Alicia, thanks to Marcus' recordings. Ten years later, a virus outbreak occurs and Raccoon City gets bombed by the government, but this isn't enough to stop the T-Virus because it's an airborne infection. A serious pandemic spreads across the world in just a couple of days, and most of humanity is soon lost. After years of fighting a variety of enemies, Alice and a small group of survivors gather at Washington DC for the final fight. Unfortunately they walk right into a trap, and Alice only manages to survive by hiding inside a metal hatch. After the battle is over, Alice comes out to discover the whole area has been destroyed, including the White House. She tries to have a drink from the National Mall but suddenly an undead jumps out of the water to attack her. Alice struggles against it until she manages to move away from its hold, and the monster can't follow her because its leg has been chained by razor wires. Next, Alice begins looking for weapons inside the crumbled buildings, but she doesn't find much. At that moment the debris starts shaking and a flying undead comes out, so Alice runs outside and gets into a jeep. With some strategic driving, she causes the creature to crash against another vehicle, and Alice drives away to escape. However the monster soon comes back and grabs the car with its claws until it reaps off the ceiling. Then it uses its tail to try to attack Alice, but she speeds up and causes the monster to crash again before turning the car around to hit the undead with it, trapping it. There are some explosives in the car, so Alice activates them and runs away while the monster dies in the explosion. At that moment a siren begins ringing and a secret camera scans Alice, who goes looking for the source of the sound. She enters an underground bunker full of weapons but doesn't find a single person around. Suddenly a fax machine starts sending a message that says hello Alice over and over and the screens turn on to show the Red Queen, who claims she's working against Umbrella now and wants Alice to stop her. Their conversation is interrupted by another undead, but thanks to the Queen's warning, Alice defeats the beast by decapitating it with just a few quick moves. Then the Red Queen explains that humanity only has 48 hours left, so Alice has to return to Raccoon City and enter Umbrella's main lab known as the Hive. There, she'll find an airborne antidote that will destroy the T-Virus and everything it has infected on contact. Afterward Alice takes a new car and heads off to Raccoon City. In the middle of the road, she drives through a barricade that shreds the tires and causes the car to crash, but thankfully Alice finds an Umbrella bike nearby. When she tries to get closer, a soldier jumps out of the rubble and makes her walk back, causing her to step on a trap that hangs her upside down. More soldiers show up and start beating her up, but Alice laughs and begins fighting them while still hanging. She knocks down a few soldiers before taking a gun from her boot to shoot back, quickly defeating them all. Then she shoots the rope to break it, and when the soldiers try to attack again, she just kills them. Now she can try using the bike, but since she doesn't belong to Umbrella, the bike electrocutes her and knocks her out. Later Alice wakes up in a small cell with other prisoners and sees Isaacs, who reveals that the Isaacs she killed during her adventures had been a clone. Since then, He's killed all of Alice's clones and he keeps the heads in a box. Suddenly a door opens and Alice learns her cell is inside a giant umbrella tank, which is being followed by thousands of the undead. Then they throw Alice outside with her hands tied to the tank, meaning she must run behind it to avoid getting killed. When an undead gets too close, Alice manages to beat it down, but she won't last long. When the guard looks away, Alice hides under the tank and waits for the guy to lean over to throw him at the undead, who immediately feed on him. Soon another guard comes out. But by now Alice has climbed on the tank and she quickly defeats him to throw him at the undead too. Next Isaacs comes out too and a fight ensues. Both Alice and Isaacs are great fighters who keep landing hit after hit, but eventually Alice overpowers Isaacs and tries to kill him with a rope. Isaacs punches her to get her off him, so Alice uses the rope to smack his head against the tank. The undead try to attack Alice too, but she defeats them with a few quick moves before Isaacs drags her back to continue the fight. After exchanging a few more hits, Alice grabs Isaacs in a choking hold and forces him to release her from the handcuffs. Isaacs does so and attacks her again, but Alice has the upper hand and almost kills him until another tank opens fire on them. At that moment she notices there's an umbrella bike inside the tank, so she cuts off Isaacs' hand and uses it to activate the bike and get away. 
Driver Lee uses the tank's turrets and missiles to try to take her out, but Alice dodges all his shots and successfully escapes. A few hours later, Alice finally arrives at Raccoon City, which has a huge pit in the middle. As she drives through the street, a light flashes from above to blind her and a pole comes crashing down, destroying her motorcycle and knocking her out. When she wakes up, she finds a man called Doc Ryan to give her an injection, so she quickly stops him and takes him hostage as a bunch of people show up with weapons. When they're about to kill her, Alice's old friend Claire shows up and tells everyone Alice is on their side. The group goes to the roof and notices Isaacs is approaching with two tanks and his undead army, so they need to make a plan, but suddenly Alice starts coughing and collapses. Thankfully Doc has some medicine to treat her, and once she's better, Alice agrees to help the group defend their fortress from Isaac's attack in exchange for them helping her find the antidote later. They don't have many weapons but they do have tons of gasoline, so they construct a few catapults to use it accordingly. When night falls, Isaacs and his army finally arrive. The team catapults a flaming projectile and destroys one of the tanks, so Isaac stops the other one and orders his soldiers to send out the bait. A survivor is released from the tank and the undead start chasing her, so Alice opens the building for her while the others shoot down the undead with bullets and another flaming projectile. When the survivor is about to reach the gate, the tank shoots to kill her, and some of the undead get inside before they're able to close the door. Doc and Claire try their best to fight the undead, but Isaacs makes Lee shoot the door and the explosion pushes the couple away. The rest of the team throws rocks from above to crush them, but then Lee fires the turrets on the roof where the team is standing to stop any other traps they prepared. On the bottom floor, the team does all they can to keep the undead from crossing the barricade. A vicious fight ensues as the group kills monster after monster, but soon one of their warriors is bitten and killed. They know the barricade won't hold up for much longer, so the group rushes upstairs to pour down all the gasoline and light it up with some torches, which incinerates all the undead below. Afterward Alice ziplines to the ground and begins shooting down zombies as she makes her way to the tank. Lee tries opening fire on her, but Alice stays hidden and sneaks on top of the tank, where she pours gasoline into the vent and lights it up to create huge flames inside. The tank suddenly stops and a soldier opens the hatch, but Alice quickly shoots him. Then Lee comes out and starts fighting her hand to hand, pushing her off the tank with a kick. They continue fighting on the ground and Lee easily overpowers Alice, winning the battle. However an undead appears behind him and while Lee is busy fighting it, Alice shoots him down. Then she enters the tank, where she quickly defeats another undead before finding two more survivors but no Isaacs. When she comes out, her team shows up as they kill more monsters and capture Lee, who they tie to the tank and send him running as bait for the undead. Afterward the team notices two more armies approaching the city, so they decide to rush to the hive to find the cure. The two survivors from the tank know where they're going and decide to come along. The best way to access the hive is through the pit, so the team begins climbing down without knowing Isaacs is watching them from afar and Wesker can see them approach thanks to the Red Queen's security system. When the group reaches the bottom of the pit, they're surrounded by dog-like monsters. The team runs away as they try to shoot at the creatures, which chase them through the pit. A few monsters get killed but in return they kill and feed on a team member too. Soon they reach a cliffside and the group jumps into the water, so a few dogs jump as well. The group immediately swims away and the dogs follow them, so when they reach the shore, another team member gets killed. As the whole horde catches up to them, another person goes down, but the rest of the group runs fast enough to enter a tunnel into the hive, where the dogs are too afraid to go. At that moment, Wesker orders the Red Queen to seal the entrance, so the group rushes in. As they run through the tunnel, Alice is attacked by an undead, so she fights it just enough to keep it off her and continues moving, letting the door crush the monster. Afterward the Red Queen greets them and shows them a video of an umbrella meeting that happened before the outbreak. Isaac's plan to trigger the apocalypse using the T-Virus, killing everyone on the planet except himself and other high-ranking Umbrella executives so they could reboot Earth to their taste. The Red Queen isn't allowed to harm Umbrella employees, that's why she needs Alice's help. She gives her an earpiece so they can keep communicating and warns her that there's a traitor in the group, but Alice shrugs it off. Meanwhile outside the city, Isaacs is found by another Umbrella tank. The soldiers refuse to go after Alice because they have different orders, so Isaacs immediately kills them all and takes over the vehicle, guiding a horde of undead to follow him to the city. When he tries to go down the pit, the tank gets stuck, and the creatures quickly surround it. Back to the group, they walk through the main hallway and find a giant fan blocking their way. Since the power is out, Alice carefully walks through the blades and makes it to the other side. The others start copying her but suddenly the power comes back and the blades start moving. Luckily the team is fast enough to dodge it all and cross safely. Wesker sees this through the security camera and orders the fan to be reversed, so it starts sucking the team in. They make sure to hold on to whatever they can find on the ground, but one girl can't grab anything so Alice has to hold her. Unfortunately the fan is too strong and after lots of struggle, the girl is sucked in and shredded to death before the power goes out again. Afterward the group crawls their way through a vent using Alice's digital map. Suddenly the power comes back and a section of the floor opens up, causing a man to fall right onto a shaft. This surface also opens up so he holds onto the door to avoid falling, however the door soon shuts and breaks his fingers. 
The poor guy immediately falls to his death in a creepy cavern while more trapdoors open to send the rest of the team down some tunnels. Alice lands in a dark laboratory full of bodies and she can hear something moving in the shadows. At that moment a team member falls into this room too and they start moving together until a body suddenly wakes up to distract the guy while a second monster kills him from behind. Alice is hit in the struggle, but she quickly recovers and shoots at the creature with both her guns until it's down. The monster also recovers quickly and runs to hide, keeping an eye on Alice by tracking the light of her flashlight. When it sees an opening, it attacks again, causing her to drop the flashlight. The monster follows the light, giving Alice the chance to throw a chain at it. Then she starts running, only stopping to hit the monster when she can. The creature tries to chase her, but the chain isn't long enough and holds it in place while Alice stabs its head. A hand suddenly startles Alice, but it's just Doc, and together they leave the lab. In the main office, Wesker wakes up the real Isaacs, meaning the one in the tank is also a clone. Speaking of that tank, Isaacs decides to come out and starts running, making the horde follow him. Meanwhile Claire lands inside a clear box, but she uses gunpowder from a bullet to blast a hole and escape, unaware Wesker is nearby. Back to Alice and Doc, they come across a dangerous area from the first adventure and find a bag of weapons that were left there by the old team. With only 19 minutes left, Alice uses the computer to activate the room's platform, which starts going down through the hive. During the ride, they see the bodies of the Umbrella high-ranking officials in cryogenic sleep, waiting for the apocalypse to be over. A furious Alice takes out the explosive she found in the bag to put up a trap, then she and Doc leave the elevator to enter a strange cavern. They quickly cross the bridge on the water and reach the main office, where the real Isaacs is waiting for them. With only 9 minutes left, Isaacs reveals he has the antidote and by threatening to destroy it, he makes Alice drop her weapon. Doc doesn't do the same because he turns out to be the traitor, and he makes Alice drop the detonator too. Wesker brings Claire as his hostage while Alice looks around the room, calculating all the potential ways to hurt Isaacs. However Isaacs does better calculations thanks to his cyborg implants and tells her not to bother because she wouldn't be able to reach any item in time. After confirming he's the real Isaacs, he explains to Alice that she isn't the original as she thought, she's just another clone from the bunch and that's why she doesn't have any childhood memories. At that moment an old woman in a wheelchair enters the room, it's a grown-up Alicia, whose DNA was used to create all the Alice clones and her sickness makes her look older than she is. Alicia wants Isaacs dead, but she's always been too weak to fight back. However she still owns 50% of the company and proceeds to fire Wesker. This allows Red Queen to harm him, so she quickly lowers a blast door that crushes Wesker's leg, trapping him. Doc tries to retaliate by shooting, but Alice already suspected him and took the bullets from the weapon before giving it to him. Alice rushes to fight Doc and Isaacs runs away as Claire fails to shoot him down. After a few hits, Alice manages to overpower Doc and leaves him on the ground so Claire can shoot him in the head for his betrayal. Then Alice puts the detonator in Wesker's hand, knowing that once he faints it will go off. While Claire and Alice run after Isaacs, Alicia connects her memories to the computer for a special gift. Claire and Alice manage to corner Isaacs, but when they shoot, he just dodges the bullets. It turns out his cyborg implants have given him great strength and speed. As the elevator starts to go up, Isaacs fights both women, quickly knocking out Claire before concentrating on Alice, who defends herself with a keyboard. She almost manages to push Isaacs off the edge, but with quick movements he manages to put her on the edge instead. There's a platform coming, so Alice kicks Isaacs in the groin and moves away just in time. When the elevator stops, Claire wakes up and tries fighting once more, but Isaacs easily defeats her again. Then he turns on Alice, hitting her a few times before throwing her into a corridor, where he activates a bunch of lasers. By moving fast and climbing on the walls and ceiling, Alice dodges them all before going back to fighting Isaacs. He throws her through the wall and she almost falls, but she uses some debris to hurt his leg and keep on fighting him. Isaac starts throwing Alice all over the corridor, but she laughs and keeps on fighting him. Soon the lasers are activated again and Isaacs raises Alice's hand to make her lose her fingers. At that moment Alice throws a pin on the ground, revealing she put a grenade inside his jacket during the fight. The grenade explodes, greatly weakening Isaacs and allowing Alice to take the antidote. Since there's little time, Claire tells Alice to leave without her. She rushes out of the hive and is ready to release the antidote, but Isaacs shows up and catches it. When he's about to shoot her, his clone appears and can't stand the idea of being a copy, so he proceeds to stab the original Isaacs multiple times. His distraction allows the undead to catch up to him and kill him too. At that moment Wesker dies and the explosives blow up the hive, killing Alicia. Outside, Alice retrieves the antivirus from Isaac's body and finally releases it, causing all the undead around her to die instantly before she collapses. Sometime later, Alice wakes up and discovers Claire escaped. The Red Queen suddenly appears and reveals that before dying, Alicia uploaded all her memories for Alice, allowing her to get the childhood she never had. Afterward, Alice goes away on a bike. Since it'll take the antivirus several years to completely eradicate the infection, she'll keep on fighting monsters to protect humanity. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.